On October 16, 2008, police went to a home in the 3000 block of Bermuda Avenue, a quiet neighborhood in the French Valley in southern Riverside County near Camp Pendleton. They were contacted to do a welfare check of a couple. When they entered the house, they discovered a horrific crime scene. The home belonged to newlyweds, Marine Sergeant Yannick Piechek and his wife Kiana Faye Jenkins Piechek, who were discovered deceased in the house. The young couple married just 67 days before their tragic deaths. Welcome to Tearful Crimes. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Now back to the video. The police were initially contacted by Kiana's co-workers when she failed to show up for work that day and no one could get a hold of her. Yannick's supervisor at Camp Pendleton also contacted the Riverside County Sheriff's Department around 9 a.m. that morning because Yannick also failed to report for his work and no one could reach him. When the officers arrived at the Piechak's home, the front door was wide open and upon entering they saw a purse on the floor right inside the front door. They saw open cabinet doors and the house smelled of a mixture of natural gas and gasoline. As they continued into the living room, they found the bodies of Kiana and Yannick Piechek on the floor. Both appeared to be dead. Both victims were bound with red duct tape as they laid on the floor naked next to each other. Yannick had significant injuries and seemed to have been beaten prior to death. He had bruising on his right side and there were shoe patterns on his back. A sock was also placed in his mouth and secured with the red tape. He was found in a kneeling position with his head down facing a pillow. Kiana was found naked and her wrists were duct taped behind her back with red duct tape as well. A sock had been placed over her eyes and again secured by tape. There was evidence that she may have been sexually assaulted. A vibrator containing her DNA and red candle were found between her legs. It appeared that both victims had been tortured before each was shot execution style in the head at close range. Kiana had been shot in the upper back of her neck and also at the right side of her forehead. Yannick had three gunshot wounds to the head, one to the left ear, one in the right cheek, and one to the back of the head. It was also very evident that the house had been ransacked. Drawers were pulled open and its contents scattered everywhere and it seems an attempt was made to set the house on fire, perhaps to destroy evidence. It appeared that several small fires had been started around the home using alcohol that was poured all over the floors. The police saw a gas can in the kitchen and multiple sets of shoe prints throughout the house. This shoe prints will prove very significant later on in the investigation. There were at least three distinct sets of shoe print patterns. Racial slurs were also spray painted around the house and the letter C had been spray painted on Kiana's stomach. The words and lover were found on the wall near the master bedroom and on a bathroom mirror. It was believed that the perpetrators did this to throw off the investigation because Piechek was white and Kiana was black. Jan Piechek, as he was known by friends and family, was born as Yannick Paul Piechek in Belava, Poland on March 13, 1984. At the age of 10, his family moved to America in 1994 and settled in the Bensonhurst area of Brooklyn, New York, where he was raised. In 2003, Yannick decided to join the Marines after the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, as he always wanted to serve in the military and give back to his adopted country. He was a helicopter airframe mechanic with Marine Medium Helicopter Squadron 164, 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing. Yannick served in Iraq from July 2005 to February 2006. He then transferred back to the U.S. in 2006 where he was stationed at Camp Pendleton. Kiana Piechak was born on February 16, 1982 as Kiana Faye Jenkins. She grew up in the San Bernardino area and was a 2005 graduate of San Diego State University where she had earned a master's degree in public health. She worked as a counselor with the Riverside County Infant Care Program with aspirations of studying to become an anesthesiologist. Yannick Piechek grew interested in Kiana Jenkins when she attended San Diego State University getting her undergraduate degree. But Jenkins didn't pay much attention to him. She swore she would never date a Marine, said her friend Jackie Townsend. 
Jenkins was very attractive and played basketball in high school. She was not a big fan of Marine's reputation, but when Piechak returned from his tour in Iraq, the two met again at a Marine's welcome home party in February 2006. Jenkins was still reluctant in dating Piechak or anyone else for that matter. And when he persisted, she finally agreed to give him a chance and go out on a date with him. She was pleasantly surprised by Yannick and they became serious. The couple's parents supported the relationship and knew it would last. When he looked at her you could tell, Kiana's mother Glenda Faye Jenkins said. This was someone who loved her as much as I did, she added. One year later, Yannick proposed to Kiana in Balboa Park in San Diego on May 19, 2007. He bought their home in Winchester a year later and they married in August of the same year. Kiana's mother later revealed that the young couple had gotten married on August 8, 2008, because Kiana wanted her husband to be, Yannick, to always remember their anniversary of August 8, 08. From the beginning of this case, the investigators knew they were looking for more than one perpetrator because of the multiple shoe prints and entryway of the home. Prints were of Nike Air Force One and Nike Cortez. They also thought that the killers either used a revolver or had taken the time to pick up the shell casings because there were no shell casings found at the crime scene. There were also many items stolen from the victims and the house. Kiana's wedding and engagement rings and Yannick's expensive Movado watch and a diamond pearl necklace were missing. Also missing were earrings and bracelet set, a silver men's bracelet with black inlay, a man's gold chain with a pendant attached, and a woman's gold necklace with a three-diamond pendant. In the master bedroom, investigators noticed that Yannick's military gear sea bag was left in the closet. The investigators thought that was strange and suspected that maybe a person who already had this type of gear wouldn't care to steal it. An ATM machine was located less than a half mile from Camp Pendleton in Fallbrook. It showed a video at 3.20 a.m. on October 16th of someone using Kiana's PIN code to withdraw several hundred dollars from the PHX joint account. On the video, the investigators could only see someone wearing a blue bandana over their face and gloves with the word mechanics written on them. They also noted that this ATM machine was on the quickest route someone would take from the Piechak house to Camp Pendleton. So they decided to focus on a military connection and started looking at those who worked with Yannick Piechak at Camp Pendleton. The investigators discovered through two friends of Yannick that Yannick liked to talk about his wife and the life they were building together. He also talked openly about his $30,000 reenlistment bonus and having lots of cash at his house as well as all their wedding gifts. Even though Yannick was a friendly talker, he was also a strict sergeant when it came to his job. He was tough and wanted things done correctly. For that reason, he rubbed some of the newer Marines under his command the wrong way. On October 24th, 2008, Yannick and Kiana are buried together in a full military funeral with a 21-gun salute. Their parents decided to bury them together since they started out their life together and would always be together in death. The investigators continued the investigation and learned of Lance Corporal Tyrone Miller, who was under Yannick's supervision and that they often butted heads. When they talked to him, he denied any animosity between him and Sergeant Piechek. He stated that Sergeant Piechak was his mentor for the past nine months. He also claimed that he was with his wife and two kids at their home on base during the time of the murders. As the questioning continued, Miller started changing his story. He went from not knowing where the Piechaks lived to admitting that he had been there months ago with his wife. He also admitted that he had been out driving around with friends and they drove by the Piechaks' house around the time of the murders. He still denied any involvement of the murders. When asked about what type of shoes he likes to wear, probably Jordans and Chucks, Air Force Ones, he said. This was the same brand that left a tread pattern at the crime scene. The investigators let Miller go, but had enough to get a search warrant for his home. The police did not have an answer when they knocked on the Miller's door. When they forced themselves in, they saw Miller backing down the hallway towards a bedroom. To the police surprise, this monster grabbed his own toddler daughter and held her up as a shield. He later put her down as the police secured him and his wife and started searching the home for any evidence. The investigators would find a litany of evidence linking Miller to the Piechak's murders. 
A blue bandana was found in the laundry room. A piece of paper with the PHX address was found under the sofa cushion in the family room. Two debit cards with Kiana's name were found on a table in the master bedroom. Also found in the master bedroom was a gold bracelet with a black inlay that was inscribed with Kiana and Yannick's names in Polish, along with a man's wedding ring and gold necklace with a pendant attached. Yannick Piechak's dress blue uniform was found hanging in the miller's closet. Shell casings were also found in a plastic bag. Numerous handguns and pistols along with a shotgun were found. A Beretta 92 FS 9mm pistol in the Miller's home was later determined to be the murder weapon. In a black backpack, investigators would find blue bandanas and mechanics brand gloves. And a pair of sneakers that would match one of the footprints left at the crime scene. Investigators also found numerous other items, such as ID cards and jewelry, indicating there may have been more robberies and more victims. Lance Corporal Tyrone Miller was placed under arrest. When he was confronted with all the evidence, he finally confessed. He stated that he and his fellow Marines, Emery's John and Kevin Cox, had planned to rob the PHX. He minimized his role by saying he only beat the shit out of Sergeant Piechek and took the ATM cards and jewelry. He also admitted to being the one who sprayed painted the racial slurs to make it look like a racially motivated crime. He placed all the blame solely on Emery's John when it came to the actual murders of Yannick and Kiana. So the investigators decided to bring in for questioning Kevin Cox, an electrical technician in Yannick's squad and Emery's John who worked under Cox. They named a fourth Marine who was also involved, Private Kassan, a.k.a. Psycho Sykes, a clerk with an artillery squadron. Cox and Sykes also admitted their involvement but denied killing the couple. Emery John's barracks were searched on October 30, 2008. Investigators would find a blue bandana and black gloves as well as Nike Cortez sneakers believed to be the ones that made the pattern on the back of Yannick and other places at the crime scene. Blood splatter was also found on the sneakers that would eventually match Yannick's DNA. Furthermore, an apartment shared by Kassan Sykes, his girlfriend, and a roommate by the name of Melissa Buck, who happened to be dating Kevin Cox, was searched. Investigators found a two-piece wedding ring set and other jewelry belonging to Kiana laying in different areas of the apartment. During the course of this investigation, the investigators discovered that these criminals had robbed other victims and taken loads of items and cash prior to robbing and murdering the PHX. It was later revealed that all four Marines, Lance Corporal Emery's John, age 18, of Maryland, Lance Corporal Kassan Sykes, age 21, of California, Private Kevin Darnell Cox, 20, of Tennessee, and Lance Corporal Tyrone Miller, age 20, of North Carolina planned to rob the PHX house the night of October 15, 2008. According to Melissa, they left the apartment where they all were between 10 and 11 p.m. When they arrived, they were unable to sneak into the house. So they hatched a plan to send Cox to the door to see if Yannick would answer it while the others hid and put on their blue bandanas and black gloves. Unfortunately and unknowingly, Yannick answered the door. Before he could even realize what was going on, they rushed in and subdued him by putting a sock in his mouth as a gag. They then did the same to Kiana shortly once they brought her downstairs. They started ransacking the house looking for the money and items to steal. When they couldn't find the money after almost two hours of searching, they began to torture the couple until they got Kiana's ATM pin number. They started loading up the stolen goods into the car they arrived in. For some sick reason, Miller and Sykes decided to begin sexually assaulting Kiana in front of her husband Yannick Piechek. It's believed they used a sex toy and other objects while her husband was forced to watch. John then grabs a couch cushion and use it as a form of silencer and shot Yannick in the head twice, then did the same to Kiana. Next they decided to cover up their crimes by trying to set small fires around the house. When that didn't work, they decided to spray paint the racial slurs to make it look like a hate crime. They left the young couple dead on their living room floor as they drove to an ATM near their work where they withdrew a couple of hundred dollars using Kiana's pen. A happy couple brutally murdered inside their own home in Winchester, California. 
24-year-old Marine Sergeant Jan Petrak and his wife Kiana Jenkins Petrak were found bound, gagged, and shot in the head earlier in October. Police have now charged four men with double murder, all four of whom are Marines. Two had worked with Petrak. This and the first thing that went through my mind, I said, accident or, or carbon monoxide from the fireplace or something. This no, I was shot. I didn't know anything. In New York, his mother reacted to the news police had made arrests. I don't. I don't move on at all. I'm a zombie. Their home was ransacked. Jewelry and other items were stolen. The suspects told authorities they meant to rob Jan and his wife. Three of the Marines lived on the Camp Pendleton base. Investigators believe Lance Corporal Emerus John, 18, shot the couple, so his charges may be enhanced. All four suspects are being held without bail at the Riverside County Jail. Sergeant Petrak's MySpace page is full of his honeymoon photos. His mother showed a dog tag her son gave her with the young couple's picture emblazoned on it. He was very happy. They, was, they shared a perfect love. John Moan, the Associated Press, Winchester, California. Miller, Cox, John, and Sykes were each charged with two counts of first-degree murder with special circumstances as the murders were committed in the course of a robbery and sexual assault. The district attorney was seeking the death penalty for all four defendants. Unbelievably, with the mountains of evidence against them, they all pleaded not guilty on November 20, 2008. All were subsequently dishonorably discharged from the Marines. The preliminary hearing was then held to determine if there was enough evidence for the four to go to trial. As she was their biggest witness, the prosecutors made a deal with Melissa Buck to testify against all four defendants for an exchange of full immunity. She testified to the whole planning, execution, and what took place after the robbery and murders of the PHX. These included the fact that she was given some of the jewelry by her then-boyfriend Kevin Cox that turned out to belong to Kiana. She also talked about the previous robberies by the four Marines, and she admitted to her involvement in those robberies. The preliminary hearing had to be suspended when in a true psycho person fashion, Kassan Psycho Sykes decided to stand up in the middle of the hearing and began urinating and flinging feces. He tried to fool the judge and the jury into believing that he was criminally insane as he was trying to banish demons. That obliged the judge to suspend the proceedings and ordered a psychiatric evaluation of Sykes. After two hours of his mental competency hearing that took place from May 24th to May 28th, 2011, he was found to be mentally fit to stand trial. The trials of the first three defendants started in early 2013. Tyrone Miller and Emery's John had the same jury. Kevin Cox had his own jury but tried together. Kassan Sykes' trial came later as there was limited room in the courthouse. All three were charged with two counts of first-degree murder, robbery, sexual assault, and two counts of special circumstances murder during the commission of a robbery. All three were also facing the death penalty. Even though the prosecutors believed all of it was premeditated, they outlined the defendant's involvement as Tyrone Miller being the mastermind, Emery's John as the shooter, and Kevin Cox as the one who got Yannick Piechek to answer the door so they could all force their way in. Some of the strongest physical evidence was blood found on Emery's John's shoes, which had Yannick's blood on them and shoe prints at the crime scene matched shoes all three defendants owned. Other crimes committed by the defendants prior to the murders were also presented. Others also testified to the fact that some defendants confessed to their involvements after the crimes. A chilling post on Emery's John's MySpace page reading, Chillin' waiting for to killin' before the murders was revealed and was presented to the jury. The motive was presented as that the defendants targeted the victims by stealing the wedding gifts and bonus money Yannick had talked about. They may have also wanted to get revenge on Yannick for being a tough disciplinarian on them, especially Miller who was believed to have been told just two days prior to the murders by Yannick Piechek that he would not be getting a promotion due to his lack of work ethic. The jury deliberated for less than three days. All three defendants were convicted of two counts of first-degree murder. Emery's John was convicted as the shooter of Jan and Kiana. Tyrone Miller alone was convicted of sexually assaulting Kiana with sexual penetration with a foreign object. 
Emery's John and Tyrone Miller were sentenced to death. Kevin Cox was sentenced to two life terms without parole. He showed zero remorse as he stated, I apologize for what happened to the victim's family. I didn't say I'm sorry I did anything because I still don't feel that I did anything to be here for it. Next it was time to try Kassan Psycho Sykes in August 2014. He only admitted to cutting off Kiana's clothes. But that did not convince the jury. They found him guilty of two counts of first-degree murder with special circumstances and one count of sexual assault after less than two hours of jury deliberations. He was sentenced to death. Three of the defendants are on California's death row. Judge Christian Therbach called the murder savage and the most inhuman he had seen in his 27 years on the bench. All appeals so far have been denied. These four Marines truly committed heinous crimes. It's ironic how Kiana did not like the reputation and behavior of Marines and would not date one until her faith was renewed by her beloved husband Yannick Piechek, only to lose her life in the hands of Marines. It is also important to note that even though these four disgraceful Marines committed these unthinkable crimes, this is not a representation of all Marines who joined the Marine Corps to help and protect others. These monsters acted as good soldiers during the day and were despicable human beings at night who terrorized their community instead of protecting it. May they never see the light of day again. Thank you for watching Tearful Crimes. See you in the next video.